Charcast, where we explore gaming and geek culture in the hills and hollows of West Virginia. I'm Travis Reynolds. I'm Doug Dameron. Dave Gilligan. And it's been a while since we've seen you guys. We haven't filmed an episode in quite a while, and we're really sorry for that. We tried to commit to doing it on a regular interval, and we're going to get back to doing that. Uh, as you will see in a bit as we go over all the things that have happened since our last episode, uh, we've been pretty busy. So um, we'll go over that stuff in a minute. Um, but first, let's uh, do one of our staples, and let's talk about what we've played lately. Doug, Dave, what have you played lately? Well, lately I've been playing a lot of heavy Euros. So um, a game that uh, I picked up last year at PAX called Agra. It's probably, I'd say it takes two to three hours easy. I've played it three players both times. It's, uh, it's very heavy, really good. Um, straight up Euro. I uh, played A Feast for Odin. Uh, Uwe Rosenberg, that is uh, another game, takes probably two to two and a half hours. Um, you know, uh, again, worker placement, uh, and if you've played any of his games lately with the tile placement, this is this is the, I guess, the magnum opus of that, the heavy tile placement. Right. So, along with some of his other games. And then, uh, just the other day, I played Great Western Trail, which is another uh, relatively heavy Euro. It takes about two to two to three hours to get through a game of that. So it's pretty weighty. Yeah, yeah, and you know, uh, in addition, played a few uh, other games. Uh, the one that's the the two that's most memorable are a couple of Stefan Feld's newer games, uh, Carpe Diem, uh, and one that we played the other day was uh, Form Trajanum, which uh, um, both uh, both typical Feld games. Was so, that uh, related to Trajan at all? No, not related to Trajan at all, um, but it's other a than, Roman theme. and Other than the theme, the design, or the name? Right, and, and you know, lots of ways to score points. Uh, and uh, I, I, I liked it. I'd like to try it again. There's uh, a whole lot to explore in the game, so it was a, a pretty much a learning game. So I, I like that one. But, yeah, it's been a lot of heavy Euros lately. What about you, Doug? Well, uh... I haven't played much games, uh, haven't played many games since our last episode, but I did pick up the Dinosaur Island Kickstarter. I think you've got that as well. Mm-hmm. We we played that together, and I've played that a few times with my family. But I think the game that I've played the most is Root. I've played a couple four-player games now. Um, I've played twice two-player with my brother. We also played once with the bot and uh, just barely beat it, but... I think it was not designed to be beaten the first time. It was a, it was a very tough bot. And I, I like that game a lot. It's from one of my favorite designers. He does games that, you know, I think this is his most uh, accessible game for sure because it's the guy that did John Company and, and Pax Pamir and uh, he did the artwork for 4X. But this game, unlike those, has a... Uh, a family-friendly theme, although it's a bit of a heavier game, and it, it's certainly more accessible. And it's I'm, good. It's good. I'm solid. not sure that I would lay. Did the artwork for Four X is one of my claims to fame. Well, he did it. That's just one. I don't know why I know that. <laughs> okay. Well, and the game that I've played mostly uh, recently was uh, Copenhagen, which is going to be from Queen Games. Kind of a shameless plug, but it's going to be a game that's coming out soon. It's out in Germany now. It. Uh, premiered at the Nuremberg Toy Fair, and it's going to go to Kickstarter for us on March 8th, which is just in a few days from when we record this. Um, It's a game about placing the facade on houses in the town of Copenhagen. It uses um, polyomino tiles like you would have in Tetris, and it plays about 20 to 40 minutes with two to four players. Um, The amount of strategy that you get out of this game for the length of playtime is really great. It's going to make a great family game, and then there's going to be some options that come on the Kickstarter with uh, what's going to be a collector's edition and then a deluxe edition that'll let you ramp up, ramp it up, make it even more more strategy, a higher higher level game for uh, people that are more uh, in the neighborhood of you know stuff. Right. Dave, it's not going to touch some of the games Dave um, <laughs> Dave talked about, but I mean it's a great strategy level twenty to forty minute game. So make sure you check that out. Very, col- very colorful, very family friendly. Um, I think a lot of people really like it. Um, it's, it's really good. Yeah, so. I, I haven't had a chance to play it, but I did listen to a review the other day that was posted on VGG 
it was kind of funny. Normally, you expect to see video reviews on BGG, uh, but it was uh, an audio review. That's the five games for do for four. What what's uh, I yeah. can't remember. Th- that you know, I listened to that review. That and, was a. I mean, it was a glowing review. But Absolutely. that is one of the most unique review styles. I've ever heard, didn't you think? It was- I it, well, it definitely wasn't what I what I expected. But uh, um, the bottom line is, is he really liked the game? Yeah, he loved the game. Um, so. He, uh, but I thought it was I was really taken aback by the style. I mean, the way he talked about it, everything was just really neat. Everybody that's uh, I don't talk to anybody who didn't like it. We've got uh, videos coming from Tantrum House and Rado Ford, and they both really liked it. So everybody that's played it really liked it. Well, I'm so. looking forward to giving it yeah. a shot. So. Yep, so uh, that's what we've played lately, and so we'll move on. Um, the next thing we're going to go over is what happened since our last show. So the first thing that happened since our last show was Charcon 2018. That happened back in July at the Clay Center. It was a big success. We think everybody had a great time. The show continues to evolve and grow, well, along with the Clay Center, which is a great venue for us. Um, we can't, can't say enough good things about it. We're looking forward to this year, which we'll talk a lot more about this year's show at the end of this episode. But for now, we're going to do another one of the things we like to do, which is we're going to go over three of our favorite things from Charcon 2018. So, Dave, what's your number three? Well, um, I'll say uh, my number three was uh, we had a, a gentleman there who was running a game called Blood on the Clock Tower that uh, is going to be coming out on Kickstarter when did you say March? It's later this month. I think it's closer to the end of March. Later this month. Watch the Facebook page because we'll post it because we have a pledge to give away. So Charcon Facebook followers and uh, Charcast uh, viewers will be able to somehow, we'll figure out how we're going to put it up. But there's a chance you'll be able to win a pledge for that game. Well, I, I remember when I scheduled that, he asked me to set the schedule up so that it would run every hour starting, you know, when the, when the show opened and practically till the end of the show, um, and just a break here and there. And um, he filled, he, he was able to get every game of that to go off. Well, not only that, not only did he have an, a, a very aggressive schedule, he was running games of that in the hotel at night after after he left the show. Right. And I he, mean, his name was Evan, right? Evan, yeah. yeah. Uh, people loved it, absolutely. Uh, I mean, and they would go back and play it again and again, and different groups and so I, I mean I just really enjoyed seeing that game um, I thought at first that wow that's a lot of games to be running but he absolutely pulled it off and I yeah. think a lot of people came back to play it more than once oh, yeah. oh absolutely yeah if you didn't get to play and you like social deduction or you like storytelling games I'm, sh- I'm, I'm a million percent confident that there will be multiple copies at jerk on this year I know several people that will definitely back it um, and, of course, one of our fans is going to win a copy. So um, definitely have a chance to play it this year. Yeah, that's, so. that's the thing that, that, uh, that I really just like seeing is uh, when you see that many people having a great time with a game. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Doug, what was your number three favorite thing from Jargon last year? My number three favorite thing uh, was actually following the Ghostbusters around. Um, that was something that I just personally enjoyed for myself, but... Uh, you know, they did a walkthrough of the entire con with the kids. Um, got to see a lot of booths that I think the kids might have missed if they weren't walking by them. And it's just a good thing to do if to stick your kids with the Ghostbusters, forget about them, uh, let them chase a ghost for a little bit. Don't don't do that. Don't forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> Bad advice from the guy with no kids. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> now you're right. That's a great event. Every year they do. It's like a Ghostbuster Academy. They kind of teach them to be junior Ghostbusters. Right. And then they go throughout the play center and they're hunting ghosts and the kids love it the ghostbusters a great event for everybody i mean tables get slimed people get slimed uh some people get glittered they don't break characters so when the kids start asking questions about cosplaying or whatever they're like well this is a real proton pack what are you talking about right. cosplaying? <laughs> so if you haven't if your kids haven't done that bring them out but don't forget about them make sure you you're going to want pictures and stuff anyway so. yeah right my number three favorite thing from last year, it's hard for me to separate my top three, but I'm going to go with the movie that we showed last year. Thanks to our Kickstarter, we were uh, one of our stretch goals was that we would have a movie screening. We did it in the Clay Center on the big IMAX screen. It was a huge success. We had well over 100 people come out. 
A lot of them were Charcon attendees. We promoted it uh, endlessly on Facebook, and we actually had a lot of people who weren't Charcon attendees who came out. All they had to do was pick up a visitor's pass for the day. They got to check out all the vendors and walk around the show and go to the movie. So a lot of people really enjoyed it, um, and we showed uh, Rogue One. And uh, the sound was awesome. The screen was awesome. Yeah. Uh, Really good. Um, again, we'll touch on this later, but hopefully we can do something like that again this year. Yeah, spoiler alert. I walked in at the, the scene where they destroy the one city. Yeah. Uh, and the, just the sound in that theater is, well, something is about, amazing. Something about being there in the in the planetarium, and even if it's a movie you've seen before, you've not seen it like this. Right. Absolutely. And, and just a little inside information, they have totally redone the planetarium with new technology so as good as it was it's only going to be better excellent all so, right so dave what's your number two favorite thing so um the past few years uh we've had a ton of play to win games in the board game area uh and we're going to have them again this year but that's always uh i you know we get to people get to play games that they normally don't get to play and somebody gets to walk away with one at the end of the uh at the end of the convention so that's always a, a cool thing to do yep that's really evolved with our show and i think a lot of conventions and we'll have a ton of play to wins again this year super popular and uh, again just just being able to give those games to people and even if you don't win i mean you get to play a game before you buy it so if it's something you're interested in you play it if you don't win it then you pick up a copy absolutely doug what was your number two uh i want to make sure i say it right and i'm sure i'm saying it wrong the jr JR and Friends Quick Draw? I didn't know if it was last name was in there or not. But yeah, JR and Friends Quick Draw. Uh, it's great. I took home a piece of art this year. I don't know where it ended up, but you you know, you buy a ticket, you get to name some scenario and they get what, ten minutes to draw it? Yeah, the time varies. I think we've gone anywhere from seven up to ten. Yeah. It depends on how complicated the requests mm -hmm. are. Uh, but you know, you get some great stuff, especially if you make a, a solid request. It, it can only be as good as your question. Yeah, it's a fun event. Uh, it's pretty interactive because uh, we usually have four artists doing it. So uh, the event usually lasts for about an hour. So in an hour, we get anywhere from six to seven rounds. So they're, we're doing 20-plus drawings in that time, uh, which means 20-plus members of the crowd are going to get a chance to yeah. take home a piece of original art. Oh, yeah. The crowd members get to suggest, tell them what to draw. And, you know, we do some interactive things where people that come in late, we let them guess what they are. Uh, if they if they weren't there uh, when we started and things like that, so it's a really fun event. Second year we've done it, it's definitely going to be one that yeah. we continue. And the, the art those guys knock out in five to ten minutes yeah, is it's phenomenal. Just, it's this doesn't matter much to me. In fact, I, I'm not even sure if it was open, but there's a bar in that room, right? There is a bar, and the bar opens both Friday and Saturday. <laughs> the Clay Center itself is a bar, so you can get a drink and take it out and play games, or you can stay in the lounge. So yeah, it opens up, and you can. Can have a beverage there in the lounge while you participate, and yeah. All right. All right. My number two favorite thing was last year. Charcon became an official convention. It took us fourteen years, but we finally hosted a Star Wars wedding. Yes, that's, that's right. right. It happened last year, and it was very impromptu. Um, Rob and Lisa they got married um, right in the Clay Center lobby uh, in front of. Uh, the 501st brought this giant diorama that was like 14 feet by 10 feet or something of Han Solo and Carbonite. It was awesome. There were Star Wars uh, characters all over, Darth Vader and you, all sorts of characters. Mandalorian. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was yeah. all sorts of people in costume. And they had a legit wedding right there in the lobby of the Clay Center. And uh, everybody loved it. Uh, I don't think anybody, our Clay Center contact, who is not a gamer and not a big geek, she's a big wedding fan, and she loved it. She thought it was great. <laughs> I think she actually runs a wedding business, and that was her first Star Wars wedding. So. Oh, yeah. So yeah. It, it was uh, it was a big event. We were really uh, excited, and we, um, it, we hosted a Star Wars wedding. What, what more can you say? Yeah. So, Dave, what was your number one favorite thing? Uh, well, again, uh, I'll just say giving stuff away. So the raffle at the end of the convention is always a lot of fun as we go through and we're drawing the tickets and a lot of cool stuff gets gets handed out. And uh, I think Mariah was the big winner uh, last year. She took the crown uh, away from Ken, uh, but uh, just 
you know, all kinds of great stuff in the in the raffle and uh, get to see people walk away with great stuff. So, yeah, yeah. very cool. Yeah, and thank, that's all thanks to our sponsors and vendors um, who helped make that possible. But, yeah, it's great. Mm-hmm. And it's too bad that Ken didn't win a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doug, how about you? What was number one? Uh, to follow up with our last episode, my favorite thing was trying to talk people to play Twilight Imperium three, uh, 4th edition with me. <laughs> uh, but, in all seriousness, my favorite thing at any convention is just playing board games from the library. And, you know, we have a solid library of board games. I got to play a few things. Uh, I played uh, Fields of Despair with, with Ian. I played um, Ex Libris with a couple librarians. It was fun. You know, I, I, I was also obviously pretty busy, but uh, I, anytime I can sit down and pull something off the board game shelf, I, I love that. And that's always my favorite part of any convention. I'm impressed that you remember the games you played at Charcon last year. Well... I only I didn't play. I'm, I'm many. lucky to remember the games I played like three weeks ago. Right. Well, um, so my number one favorite thing. Well, first let me say I'm impressed that none of us repeated the same thing. I think every time we've done a top five, which we only did three this time, we almost always repeat. But we didn't. My number one favorite thing from Charcon last year was at our after dark party, which happens every year on Saturday night. It starts around eleven and runs until. You know, sometime later than midnight. Um, (laughs) Last year we did karaoke. We've got a PA where we do karaoke now. We've started taking it to other conventions. We took it to Sin City Con last year. But we did it last year at our host hotel, which we'll be doing it again this year. And it was a hoot. It was so much fun. It was in a room in the hotel. I mean, it's in July. The room in the hotel probably had 50 people in it. And as soon as you walked in the door, you instantly began to pour sweat. It was hot. But everybody still had a great time. The people that did karaoke, everybody had so much fun. Some people were better than others, but everybody still had a great time. There was an appearance by Bubba Presley. Um, There was a lot of people that sang. So if you didn't make it last year, do two things. One, plan on going this year. And two, start working on the song, like your song, your go-to song. So Because when you show up, we're going to try and talk you into singing. So, all right, so that's our three favorite things from Charcon uh, last year. Um, so now we'll, uh, we're going to move on to what was the next thing that happened since the last one. And for us, the next thing that happened since our last show was Gen Con. Yep. Gen Con, you may have heard it, it's another convention. <laughs> it's not in West Virginia, but Gen Con. Little, uh, little convention. Right. Yeah. Uh, happens out in Indianapolis every year. It's huge, it's the biggest tabletop convention, certainly in the United States. Um, we go every year uh, on behalf of Queen Games. We work there in the booth, and we spend time in Indy. Indy's great. Um, it's a good town. It's right downtown. Everything within six or eight blocks gets soaked up by Gen Con, whether it's meeting space or restaurants or bars or anything. Everybody's basically involved in some way. It's a huge impact to the city. Uh, for us, we were very busy. Queen had Luxor. That was the debut for Luxor, which was nominated uh, last year for Spiel des Jahres didn't win, but it was nominated, which makes the game very popular. So we had those, and I think we just about or did sell out. We definitely sold out of the Collector's Edition, and I think we sold out of Luxor, so that kept us very busy. And uh, But we had a great time. Uh, Dave, what was, what was your favorite thing from Gen Con last year? So um, every year, at, uh, well, the past few Gen Cons, I uh, meet up with some of my friends from around the country, Canada, and up in uh, people from up north. Uh, and uh, we play games, but there's a couple of us, uh, three of us that get together on Saturday morning, and uh, we go do CrossFit. We do a session of CrossFit, so uh, that's uh, that's fun. It's different. It's not usually what you do at a convention, but uh, we have a good time with it. Um, and uh, so, uh, yeah, so Brandon and Sean and I go and and, uh, and beat ourselves up for about an hour. How are you feeling this year after the CrossFit? I was a little sore. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I always love the CrossFit <laughs> sessions when we go and do CrossFit. <laughs> so for me, um, it's hard for me to list a favorite thing because basically at Gen Con, I see the exhibitor hall, the hotel, and whatever restaurant we go to that night. Um, I really don't get out to do a whole lot. The exhibitor hall at Gen Con is great. Uh, if you only have a day to spend, it's not enough. It's immense. Um, even though we spend every minute that they're open in the exhibitor hall i never see everything and i'm sure dave has oh there's no way i mean it's hard to get around and see it all it's just immense 
But I will list my favorite thing at Gen Con is, and I think I got out there once this year, but I, I ate from there several times, the food trucks. Gen Con brings in like a hundred different food trucks and they do it in shifts of like 25. So they'll bring 25 in for a couple hours and they move them on. And I think they have two different sites now where they park. There's like one at one side and one at the other side of the building. There's one on one side. The other is over by the ball field. Right. Because yeah. Gen Con has now expanded into Lucas Oil Stadium. That's how big it is. You have where to the Colts you go, play. walk through the tunnel and go and play games where the Indianapolis Colts play. Yeah. Anyway, uh, they have two different locations and they cycle them through. So, And the food truck, the food's, the food's awesome. So that would be my favorite thing, which... Again, I don't see much. But. So you could do CrossFit in the morning, right? And, go and hit the we'll, food truck. We'll use the calories I burned to go hit the food truck. That's yeah. right. I didn't go, yeah. but I'd agree with you on the food truck. We would have tied on that one. <laughs> Heck, well, uh, walking from the hotel to the exhibitor hall at Gen Con is a workout in itself. So yeah, yeah. hey, that's a that's that's a CrossFit in itself. Yeah. That's right. There you go. That's right. All right, so the next thing that happened calendar-wise, I'm pretty sure was bonus round. Charcon bonus round has been going on now, I think it's about five years. It's a great RPG-focused event that happens in Flatwoods, and the facility up there at the Days Hotel is a top-notch conference facility. If it was about three times the size and it still had the same fill and facility to it, we would love to host Chark on there. Yep. Just not quite enough space for that. But it's a, it's a really fun. Uh, everybody up there, it's very intimate. A lot of games getting played, a lot of role-playing, a lot of evening activities. Um, it did move to September now. That's its new home. It used to be in the spring. But that was a little too close to Charcon. Plus, uh, trying to plan Charcon and Bonus Round at the same time proved to be uh, too much. I know Corey is heavily involved in that, and it was just too much for him. So planning it afterwards is kind of where they've moved. So um, that's going to be in September every year. So if you haven't been to Bonus Round, Flatwoods is only about an hour from Charleston, so think about traveling up and checking it out. Yep. That was the first year I'd been. And, uh, yeah, that is a super nice facility for that. Yep. I totally agree. Yep. Uh, so the next thing, uh, we may get some things flipped around as far as dates here, but the next thing we've got, SabasaCon is a convention I know a lot of you have heard about. about and uh, well, I'm sure we skipped over some other conventions that happened last year. But we wanted to mention SabasaCon, which is a great anime <clears throat> convention. It happens in Huntington and has been for, I think they've been around for a year or two years longer than Charcon, so I'm going to guess that puts them at going into 16 or 17 years. Um, they've always been, well, they were in at the Charleston Civic Center back in their very early days, but then they moved to Huntington and they were a big Sandy Superstore Arena. Um, for the first time in a number of years, none of us went. Dave and I have been going off and on the last few years because yep. both of our daughters are big anime fans. And I think we have a few other staff members who are in the same boat, like Corey and Abby. But um, when none of us ended up going last year for various reasons. And that was the last year that they're going to have it there because now they're moving to Charleston, which is of note to all of our fans. And they're going to be at the Charleston Civic Center in October. So if you haven't been to SabasaCon, make sure you make note of that and check check out their uh, website or Facebook page so you can see when it's going to happen and uh, go check them out. I know they've got a growing gaming presence at that show as well, so be sure to check out SabasaCon. Yep. Um, somewhere between SabasaCon and the next convention we're going to talk about, there was some big happenings in West Virginia because I think that's about the time that Fallout 76 was released. Woo! I'm playing Fallout 76. I know a lot of people are. It's really cool to be from West Virginia and march around West Virginia and do all sorts of stuff. I was in Sutton, and I was in Moundsville, and I was in Morgantown, and uh, in Philippi, although they say Philippi for some reason in the game. Okay. There, um, all sorts of little places like that that I've actually been and close to home uh, just the other day. So, um I'm interested to see how many. I know a lot of people when it first came out got kind of dissatisfied with it. Um, they did. They, they did. It wasn't what they wanted. For me, it's like playing multiplayer Fallout Four, which is great because I love Fallout Four. Um, they've made a lot of fixes to the game, and they've got a very aggressive uh, launch of stuff that's coming out this spring. I think we posted it. Uh, you can find it online. It's the next hundred days. They've got a bunch of stuff that they're going to be doing. Um, if you check, if you played it first and you haven't checked it out lately, come back and check it out. And if you play on the PC, be sure to message me because I'm looking for people to play on the PC because everybody plays on PlayStation or Xbox. So yeah, I'm a console guy. Not, have not, they added not cross-platform? Huh? 
No, the very little, only the very little cross-platform stuff. It seems like they do it more. I thought for sure PC and Xbox would for this game, but yeah. have, they, have they added more NPCs, or is that a plan? There, there's some talk about that, but right now there are are any NPCs other than other player characters. You essentially and don't the robots, and ro- well, you don't meet any people. Right, and I don't. Know, I'm more of a single player gamer myself, and right. so that's part of why I didn't play after the beta. Yeah, I right. think I think that was an intentional thing as part of the story that there's no people left surviving. Right. Um, but there are a lot of robots, so friendly robots, and <laughs> a lot of unfriendly things. Oh, speaking of cross-platform play, though, uh, Xbox Live is coming to the Switch. I don't know why. Yeah, but I Xbox heard Xbox Live is on the Switch. That's we were, that we were just talking about that. Yeah, it's got to be big for Switch. I mean, because uh, it's not reverse. So you're not going to be able to play Mario and Zelda on the Xbox. Right, but you're gonna be able to play Halo on the Switch or you're, whatever. You're gonna be able to play the the streaming game service, I believe, on, on the Switch. Yeah, mm. that's, ideally, that seems like a big deal. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know. I think this generation Microsoft fell behind, but on on the next one, they've got a head start with you know putting all their first party games on on this service pretty soon after launch uh, for a good price. Yeah, that's nifty. So anyway, Fallout 76, if you haven't played it, get it. If you had played it and stopped, go back. And if you're still playing, good for you. Hit me up if you're on the PC, and it helps you get ready for Charcon this year. Yep. So the next thing we have on our list of stuff that happened since our last episode is PAX Unplugged. That's a reasonably new convention. This was the second year. Second year. It's in Philadelphia at the Philadelphia Convention Center, which is huge. Um, PAX is the... Started, they have PAX East and PAX South. They have a bunch of PAX shows, and basically it's from Penny Arcade. They started out running it, and it's grown. It's, it's, the PAX shows are primarily a multimedia show. Right. PAX Unplugged is focused on tabletop stuff, so role-playing and miniatures games and lots and lots of board games. So we've been going now for two years with Queen. Um, we really like the show. Philly's a great town um, to do stuff in. Uh, it's right down near Chinatown, so there's great food. There's a lot going on there, and we enjoyed PAX Unplugged. Uh, well, maybe we'll be back again this year, but um, we liked it. Dave, what was your favorite thing at PAX Unplugged? So um, we took a trip down to well, which part of Philly was it? Oh, it's, it was just just near the circle where we stayed on Ben Franklin Parkway, mm-hmm. talking about the steps. No, no. Oh, you're talking about talking about the cheesesteaks. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about Is that when you East and Philly or North Philly. I or? certainly was in East Philly, down East near the Philly. docks. Yeah, so we went to the uh, it's it, it's Geno's and Pat's. Geno's and Pat's, right. the cheesesteaks. They're yeah. right across from each other. Uh, and apparently there's a big rivalry and about who's best and who yeah, started who's, it. who's best who started it but we uh, but we we went ahead and got got cheese steaks and those we, were we got them from really Pat's good. they were got really them. excellent they were, it was really a huge pain in the butt to find a place to park we yes. got lucky and found a spot to park they have no inside seating which is significant because Pax Unplugged is uh, last weekend in November, first weekend in December. <laughs> it was cold. And it was bitterly cold as we sat outside on a picnic table and ate. The sandwiches were cold by the time we were done, but they were, they were very good. Yeah, they were good. They, they, was I, it yellow cheese or white cheese on yours? You had your choice. I, cheese, cheese Whiz, whiz. Was, the, was the default. And Although you, I've heard that people with, from Philly don't actually without. eat it with Cheese Whiz. Yeah, it, right. There's a there's a code, language code to how you order with, without, and all that stuff. Wit, without. Wit, right. without. Yeah. So what I will t- say is they were good, but I would not say they were best the best cheesesteak I've had. Because it was very... Dry. I think. It was. It was traditional. It, it, was, it, was, kinda, it was a cool experience. Kind of cool very to go. Traditional. And, yeah. But um, I would just as well prefer like I a, like sautéed things. I'm on personally. Yeah, Penn Station. I think Penn Station's uh, Philly's better. Than it that. was still fun to get out and do that. I've been know? having a lot of jerky so, bikes lately. Yeah. Yeah. But that was but fun. It was very cool to go. Yeah, and and uh, well, I, I don't think we're going to cross, but you mentioned the Rocky Steps. So Yeah, he yeah. and James and Mike raced up the Rocky we Steps. We raced up the wa- Rocky and Steps. And did da 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 at the top. Yeah. And it's, you wouldn't be surprised to find they weren't the only idiots doing that. <laughs> I'm sure it happens every day. It, oh, yeah. Certainly, it's, there were many people who did it while we yeah, were there. Yeah, the, there's the Rocky statue there, and then the guy that stands there and acts like he is the tourist guy, but he's actually just panhandling. So he right. takes your picture and then asks you for money, which right. is fine, you know. That was uh, that was one of, that was one like a life goal for Mike Maney. 
yeah to go and was run that? up the rocky steps yeah, yeah. he yeah. played the music he yeah he he, the, it, he that's one of his theme songs yeah. he has theme music for my, all the important things he does in life and rocky's one of the go-tos if you've never seen him eat the meat mountain to the rocky theme song that's a video that's out there somewhere that you should probably <laughs> go and find yeah anyway for me i'll go food too the I, i've literally <laughs> never stepped in the terminal market in Philly. It's uh, sort of like the North Market to Origins. It's adjacent to the building, but it's an old train station, and uh, it's full of great food. Um, Jess seems to be our, our go-to. She runs over there and gets food all the time. Donuts and s- sandwiches and, and you know, you know, you know uh, they've got gourmet corn dogs. They've got she, she all sorts of different uh, the food's great. Yeah, so she'd just grab a whole variety of things and bring it back. And yeah. yeah, we didn't go to Wahlburgers this year. That was we went to Wahlburgers last year. That yeah. was neat too. But yeah, Philly's yeah. a cool town. Yeah, it it's is really neat. And Chinatown again was fun. We went to Chinatown yeah. for dinner, and uh, Dave <laughs> and Ian and my son Nicholas uh, had a uh, who can order the strangest thing off. <laughs> I think oh, yeah? James ordered frog, not like frog legs, but frog. frog. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Dave, what did you order? I ordered the kanji with uh, pork, heart, and liver. And Nicholas ordered the dragonfish, yeah. which was wicked looking. And we spent the whole dinner trying to look it up on the internet and see which dragonfish it was, because apparently there's like eight different kinds of dragonfish. Yep. So which was the strangest, at least visually? Uh, the only one I ate was the dragonfish. And the dragonfish... Taste visually, I'd say the dragonfish was the weirdest, wouldn't you think? Because it was the like spiky looking when it came out, but thing. it tasted pretty normal. The uh, you know, and I'm I don't mind liver and, and whatnot, but it was it was yeah. just too much. I've had so. deer heart, but so it was I fine. Can imagine pork it was fine. Was so the, the, this the place we asked them for a knife so Dave could <laughs> cut the stuff in his in his dish, and they brought us a fork. So that they 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 cut it with the fork, but it worked. I guess it right? worked out. Yeah. yeah, it was fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, for after packs for us every year, we kind of head into um, the off season because we're not going to conventions. That's at the end of the year. We get ready for the holidays. Uh, we don't have any more conventions until the spring. So that's what happened next for us. It was an enjoyable downtime to not be going to conventions. But then we turn the corner on it. So coming up, we've got HerdCon coming up in about a week and a half. That's a new convention. It's going to be at the uh, Marshall campus. I think it's in the Student Union, but you better check their Facebook page just to make sure. Um, so uh, it's new. It's a one-day convention. I think it's only $5 to attend, um, and uh, it should be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's um, uh, Saturday, March 16th. Yep, March 16th. Yep. And then uh, a couple weeks after that, Dave and I will be hitting the road and going to Lexington, which is one of my favorite cities. I go there a lot. Uh, I've got family there, and you see my Coach Cal on the table. It's basketball season. Go Big Blue. And uh, we'll be going down there for Lexicon, which is great group of guys run that uh, i've been going for several years yeah it'd be my first year yeah. so and we'll have a lot of fun there yeah but throughout all of that we will be planning charcon for next year for this upcoming year so let's get into that charcon is going to be july 12th to the 14th i don't even know if we said that earlier did we i think we skipped that over so july 12th to the 14th if you haven't noted the dates We've had, I know we put it all over Facebook, but July 12th to the 14th. Um, it's going to be at the Clay Center again, which it has been for the, it'll be the third year. Um, it's going to uh, be hosted hotel-wise by the same hotels. That's a Quality Inn Suites, and what, by then, again, should be a Wyndham. They're right across the street. Um, some a lot of massive changes have happened at that hotel. If you stayed there uh, last year or the year before, they changed quite a bit. They hired um, a sales director who we've known for a long time. He was actually our contact the year we had Charcon in a hotel before, which was over on the boulevard at what yeah, used to be the uh, heart of town. That was a while back. Um, yeah, it's been a while. His, uh, he, he's really kind of uh, got that place straightened out. They got a new housekeeper, uh, head of housekeeping. She's making sure everything's on the straight and narrow, and um, they're really moving things in the right direction with both of those hotels. So we're anxious to see how things go this year, so have no hesitation on staying there. Um, Our theme this year is post-apocalyptic, and it's uh, uh, one that we're excited about. So like I said earlier, get your fallout going and get yourself in the mind frame for it. We're anxious to see some 
post-apocalyptic themed costumes, role-playing games, yep. miniature games, you name it, all sorts of stuff. Um, we, as, as always, we're going to have uh, lots of events. Dave, you want to tell us about some of the events? So uh, some of the events we're going to have, of course, uh, I mentioned earlier the Play to Wins. Mm-hmm. Uh, so those will be in the board game area. We have the library that we bring, so uh, we'll have plenty of board games there. And, of course, feel free to bring any board games you want to play, open gaming, all of that good stuff. Um, there's going to be plenty of RPGs again this year, uh, you know, uh, Pathfinder, Starfinder, uh, D&D, the whole gamut. And uh, hopefully we'll get some post-apocalyptic-themed uh, RPGs going. Um, also, for the Play to Wins, uh, we have a social deduction area. I almost forgot that, but anything social deduction related like Werewolf, uh, coup, the resistance, blood on the clock tower. Blood on the clock tower. That was another one. Yeah. So um, we've got that uh, that going on. We've got the costume contest, of course. Um, we've got the uh, the event that you mentioned earlier, Jr. and Friends Quick Draw. Uh, that'll be in the uh, the Founders Lounge up there. Um, and uh, gosh, we got the vendors coming. Um, we have panels, we costume panels, contests, exactly. The so. Ghostbuster event Doug talked about. We've got there's lots, and of course we we wouldn't be able to do host a convention if uh, people didn't run games. So we always are looking for people to run games. So when we open event submission, make sure you get on that and submit some stuff. Absolutely. Maybe I'll get someone to play Twilight Imperium for once. Yeah, please play Twilight Imperium, Doug. Yeah, please. <laughs> These guys want me to shut up about it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but no, there's there's no shortage of events. So uh, and um, you know we'll be working on the getting the schedule and everything right. together. And we again f- we have, we're full on vendors every year. Yep. Uh, we haven't uh, opened it up yet, but I'm sure it'll be oh, full again. We don't have any the raffle. Up having space, right? Don't forget the raffle. Uh, that's always a good way to end the show. So if you want to make sure that you play something, definitely you know log on and add it. Oh, absolutely. Request players, let people know you're bringing it. The The reason I probably never get to play Twilight Imperium is because I never do that. Yeah, if Doug would submit it with one less player than what it plays, then he would probably get people to sign up and he'd get to play. But, I know I'd be busy. It's mostly a joke, but it's not a joke that you need to do it if you re- seriously want to play something. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just good, good idea. Good so, so one of the things that helps us build all that stuff is our Kickstarter. We did that for the first year last year. We're going to be doing that again this year. Our plan is to launch it on March the 12th, which is uh, just about a week from now. We've been working on it a lot. Um, we had a lot of successful things last year. We're looking to add some new things. Uh, hopefully, we're going to be able to meet our goals and hit a stretch goal and host another movie. Well, if we do, we'll let you know what that's going to be. Um, backing the Kickstarter is incredibly helpful to Charcon. It helps us gauge attendance. It gives us uh, additional operating capital leading into the show, which is very important. And it also lets us offer to you, our attendees, cool swag. And it's a great way for you to get the cheapest admission available. We let you buy admission cheaper than what you're able to buy uh, on site or even cheaper than pre-reg. Yep. So if you're going to um, attend, consider back in the Kickstarter. Um, and if you're back the Kickstarter before or if you're planning on it this year, feel free to tell us your thoughts between now and next week. Uh, we're looking for suggestions for stretch goals. If you've got some, post them in the comments on YouTube or on Facebook. Send us a message. Any ideas you have for the Kickstarter, be sure to let us know. Again, it's coming up soon. Um, we look forward to another successful uh, Kickstarter. Yeah. yeah, be sure to check out all the different tiers, all the different options. I know last year, and, and I assume we're going to do it again this year, is like a, a group option. We did. We, well, we had uh, base attendance, and we had several different VIP attendance options. Mm-hmm. And then we had a group option where if you and ten of your, nine of your friends want to come, um, you all get in at a very good rate and... Uh, we give you a table that's your own to where you can promote your group if you're a game group or you can play games on. It's your spot. It's your table. Or you can <laughs> store stuff or you can, I don't know, have a have have a arts and craft exposition. I yeah. As far as those VIP uh, tiers go, I think the food was great that we had for that situation last year. Yeah, the feedback we got from the VIPs was very good. I think yeah. everyone was pretty happy with it. So yeah, check out check out if all the if options. If you're planning a VIP, sure. make sure you get in there early because I would expect they did go pretty quickly, and I expect they'll go even quicker this year. And it is finite; we can only accommodate so many. So yeah, absolutely. Right. 
I, don't, I think that covers about everything, Dave. Yeah. Does? I think it does. I don't have anything. I've been quiet for the last 10 minutes. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, then, for Dave and Doug, I'll say thanks for watching, and we look forward to seeing you soon. All right, bye. Good night.